I'm Nadia Hakim, a transplant surgeon for 20 years, and I've done over 1,200 kidney transplants. I could have had thousands more patients if only we'd had the organs. I'm convinced that the only way we can solve Britain's kidney crisis is by allowing the living to receive a substantial financial reward for giving one of their kidneys. It's illegal to buy or sell human organs of any kind in the UK. The idea is regarded as morally repugnant, absolutely taboo. Every time I talk about it in public, I get a very, very hostile reaction, often a, a very big post bag of hostile mail. Once you've let the genie out of the bottle, uh, where will it end? You know, when we start selling corneas, we start selling livers, which bit, which bit do we stop at? 6,000 sufferers of kidney failure need a transplant now. With modern surgical technologies and new drugs, there is an answer to this, and it is to increase the number of transplants from live, unrelated donors. But to persuade enough people to come forward, I think we have to pay them. Leila is 26. She can't go out with her friends at night because she has to go for painful dialysis. I can no longer run from the bus anymore without being in extreme pain or climb up the stairs without holding on to the banister. So as the years go on, I feel, I feel my body literally deteriorating. To stay alive, she's had to make this journey to St. Helier's Hospital three times a week for the past four and a half years. The last time I had dialysis was Friday night and I feel terrible Monday. So everything that I've eaten and drank since Friday it has built up and makes me feel very sick. Just now, I cannot wait to get on. The only days I can't wait to come to the island is on Monday. Every other day, I hate it. Just wait for the nurses now. Have you set all the parameters? Lela's kidney is packed up for no apparent reason. Now she's unable to pass water, so the dialysis cleans the toxins from her blood and removes excess fluid. Okay. Anyway, everything is okay. Yeah. You're on, and I'll see you later. Okay. All right, if any problem, give us a call. Okay. Dialysis is not a perfect substitute for a real kidney. Like the famous saying, you do not know what you have until it's gone. I do. I would do anything, anything for a kidney now, and I would appreciate it so much. It's unbelievable. I'm actually only allowed to consume 500 mils of fluid a day, which is not just fluid and tea, coffee, or what I drink. It's also in the food that I eat. You think it's really, people just don't know how hard it is. If you think, I probably have half of that already in the morning with a cup of tea, and then I'm only allowed another half of that bottle. And I don't know if this is a human being thing, but when you know you can't have something, you want it. So I am always feeling thirsty. With 20,000 people on dialysis in this country, kidney failure costs the NHS a shocking 3% of its total budget. Of these, around 6,000 are registered on the transplant list. The others are too ill or not ill enough. But if we had enough kidneys, we could transplant thousands more. On average, British patients wait two and a half years to receive a kidney from a deceased donor. Leila's already waited four and a half. Hello. How are you? I'm OK. Yeah. We're happy to see you. You know that. You too. Coordinator Christina Ho works with UK Transplant, which allocates cadaveric kidneys to those on the waiting list. But so far, there's been no potential match for Leila. So we keep our fingers crossed, so maybe this is the year. I keep saying that to people. Hopefully this is the year. Kidneys are allocated according to blood group and tissue type. Some people are fortunate and if the right match comes up for them, they might be offered a kidney within months of being on the waiting list. And some people have, may wait for five years, eight years, or, and 10 years or even more. And they're just desperately waiting for this chance that uh, will transform their quality of life. Last year, only 1,300 of the waiting 6,000 received a kidney through UK transplant, and hundreds died before they got one. The present system just isn't working. 
the UK has one of the lowest transplantation rates in Western Europe. In 2001, the government pledged to double the number of kidney transplants in five years, but it's only increased by a pitiful 12%. Increasingly frustrated, many patients are risking their lives traveling abroad to pay for transplants. I've given myself a time limit within the next six, seven months. I will look about getting a kidney transplant abroad. And unfortunately, that's what it, I mean. It, I know it does sound desperate, but I am, I am desperate now. I cannot live my life another year or two like this, let alone five or ten. Going abroad and paying for a transplant is incredibly dangerous. Clinics have sprung up in dozens of countries where local donors are used and paid very little for their organs. I'm totally against this type of trade because it's completely unregulated. I would say it's the modern day equivalent to backstreet abortion. And patients come back to the UK with all sorts of problems which have to be fixed here. I'm about to meet one of those patients. He bought a kidney in Pakistan where the trade is completely unregulated and nearly died as a result. Good morning, Mr. Qureshi. Good morning. Uh, it's Nadi Hakim. How are you? I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, not at all. Please please After being told he could wait up to six or eight years for a transplant, Shraib Qureshi went to Pakistan in 2005 and looked at four hospitals. The conditions uh, in, the, in the clinic and hospital in Rawalpindi were, were really bad. Uh, I had asked the surgeon if I could see his operating theatre. And in the theatre, I saw unclean instruments and basically the level of hygiene was appalling. Uh, the instruments were still bloody, they were unsterilized. Uh, the place was basically scary. I uh, abandoned this hospital, the deposit, everything and decided to go elsewhere. So despite what you've seen and because you were desperate, you decide to have the transplant in Pakistan. What was the outcome of your operation? Three days later I was feeling fine but then uh, severe complications developed. One was an actual rejection, uh, an acute rejection of the transplanted kidney and the second one was described by my surgeon as a leak in the system. Both of them were in fact life-threatening. A second surgery was performed, it did not result in a successful outcome and 10 days later, which is to say within 30 days I had my third surgery and the leaks continued. So there was urine leaking into my system. The doctor did not know what else to do. There was no aftercare. It was pretty bad. You were obviously very sick, and I have to say you're very lucky to be alive. A complication like this, uh, you know, end up, unfortunately, uh, frequently uh, with the death of the patient. At that stage, I would have preferred death. Instead of all these complications, additional surgeries, further cuts and bruises, the pain was excruciating. So I would rather have checked out and bid everybody farewell. On return to the UK, Shoaib had to spend six months in an NHS hospital. A 2003 survey discovered that fewer than half the kidneys purchased abroad worked properly. Worse still, a third of the patients died. No one knows how many patients are going abroad, but almost every renal unit in the UK has examples. Surgeons at the Royal Free assessed the cost of this transplant tourism to their NHS budget. The real, real worry about these patients is they're coming back not just with a kidney transplant, but they can be coming back with other things that they didn't want transplanted, like virus infections, etc. And that has a big economic cost to the NHS when these patients come back. Basically, we were picking up all of the problems that these, these patients were landed with. And we worked out approximately every patient who came back from uh, a, 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 a transplant abroad was costing us about £45,000. That's a lot of money. It's a huge amount of money. But deteriorating kidney patients will continue to go abroad unless they can be offered a transplant in this country. The harsh reality is that fewer than 2,000 suitable kidneys become available through deaths each year. Of these, only 60% are procured because many families refuse to consent. With only enough kidneys from dead people for one in five on the transplant waiting list, we have to find another way to bridge the gap. 
Last year, 600 living people gave one of their kidneys to a friend or relative, but they had to do it for love. Mr. Razak is lucky to have someone who loves him very much. After his kidneys failed because of diabetes, his wife, Lubna, offered to donate one of hers. We've spent six months checking that she's a healthy, suitable match, and tomorrow I'll be operating on both of them. This is your last ever dialysis, yes. which is, I'm sure, good news for you. Yeah, very good news. You must be fed up being on dialysis. Obviously, and yes. it's your wife who's going to offer you a kidney. Yes, my wife. This is an unbelievable gift she's offering. Yes, this is an unbelievable I'm gift. This is a just a new life gift from my wife. Ms. Rezak, is this something you feel very proud of? Yes, I'm very proud. I'm very happy because my husband started a new life here. You see, I can't see it like this. I see the first time from him like this. I'm shocked. It's very difficult for me. And I have no doubt all will go well in the morning. So we got to see you in the morning? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. And, and I hope you also pray for us. Of course, of course. Yeah. We'll see you, you in the morning. Sir. Thank I'm you. Sure all will go well. Yeah. All right? Thank you. Live kidney transplants are much more successful than cadaveric transplants. There is less risk of rejection and live transplant kidneys remain functional for an average of seven additional years. But not everyone has got a wife, relative or friend who is able or prepared to give a kidney. We need to encourage thousands of unrelated donors to offer their kidney to the transplant program. And I think the best way to do this is to financially reward them. The 6,000 patients waiting for a kidney transplant cost the NHS around £190 million a year just to keep them alive on dialysis.